This is going to be a study on the subject of video games versus the Bible. And in this study, I'm going to show you why the Bible is better and also show you how the same, some of the same reasons that people play video games is some of the same reasons that people love the Bible. And number one is the adventure of it. One of the reasons, one of the many reasons people spend so much time playing a video game is because they love the adventure. The story mode on games almost seems to take you into another world. And people like to escape reality and get lost in something. They like to get into what you would call a fantasy world. Because, you see, people are very discontent with their life. And Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. So, that's the Apostle Paul talking, and he knew how to be content, no matter how life was going. But see, people don't know how to be content today. They're very unhappy with their life. But you see, the Bible also takes you into another world. The moment you open the book, you will discover an almighty being who slung the stars into existence and made a perfect world for man to dwell in. He made Adam a perfect body, that would live 900 years. And it's fun to imagine what the world would have looked like back then as you read about it, a land of gold. In Genesis 2.11, it says the name of the first is Pison, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. Sit back and think for a minute what the world would have looked like when Adam was here in his perfect body before he sinned against God. And also, you had no rain on earth at this time. In Genesis 2, 6, it said, But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Imagine a world with perfect weather, perfect temperature. But after Adam fell, the Lord had a cherub come down to keep the way of the tree of life. Because, you know, he didn't want Adam to go in there and eat the fruit and live forever in his sinful state. But you see, God put a cherub there. That's a, a heavenly creature. And he had that thing guard the way of the tree of life. So all the people around would be able to see that cherub with that flaming sword. You see, the cherubim are odd-looking creatures. Just like you see on the games, you see some odd-looking creatures. And what an adventure it would be as a kid to walk close to the Garden of Eden and see a cherub with a flaming sword. In Genesis 3.24, it talks about this. It says, So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You see, video games often have an end-of-the-world theme, and people love to get that end-of-the-world feeling like they are the last person on earth. But the Bible originated this plot. Noah, I'm sure you know who Noah is, had to build an ark, and him and his family were the last people left on earth after the flood. While the entire world perished and went to hell, no one and his family survived. So, the Bible originated that plot. You see, Noah, was the last, Noah and his family was the last people on earth, and they had to repopulate the planet. It really was the end of the world as those people knew it when that rain started coming down. And video games often portray hell in the underworld. Games like Dante's Inferno. The Bible also shows you a literal underworld where the lost wicked men go at death. Proverbs 15.24 says, The way of life is above to this wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. So the adventure down the halls of hell and spending eternity there would be an adventure you wouldn't want to take. But video games portray worlds with strange creatures and giants. The Bible does the same thing. While Noah was still on earth right before the flood, you see giant men and you see angels on earth at this time. In Genesis 6, 4, it says there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in into the daughters of men, 
and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So you see, video games and the Bible can both take you into a, a world, and you can get lost in that world. Many times I open up the pages of the Bible and everything that I read, I try to vision that in my head. And as I'm doing that, I get taken into another world. Only difference is video games aren't real and the Bible is real. The only di Another difference is video games are many times sinful while the Bible is not sinful. Video games are fake. What the Bible said actually happened is happening and will happen. Video games take people into a fantasy land where there is no limits on what they can do. A fantasy world of crime and sex perversion and violence and wickedness of all types. But the Bible also talks about a literal future time when it will be complete chaos in the tribulation. In Matthew 24, 12, it says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. During the tribulation... Men will run around full of hate and murder and sinfulness, just like the main characters on the Grand Theft Auto games. No love for anyone but self. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 2 talks about the last days, and it says men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. On some video games, you have people populating other planets and the bible also speaks of this in the future in isaiah 9 7 it says of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this in eternity after this is all said and done, in eternity, the people who never got a glorified body will continue to have children and the increase of the Lord's government and peace. There shall be no end. So you see, most of the plots from video games and from the movies all come from a King James Bible. While video games take the player on an adventure, the Bible takes man on adventures that are an actual reality or soon to be reality or was at one time a reality. Men play video games because of adventure. So if you like adventure, open the Bible. You're going to go through a lot of different adventures. So men like video games because of adventure. And next, they like it because of achievements. And I remember as a young kid playing the Xbox 360 and trying to get all the achievements for a game. I look back at that now and see that as such a waste of time. But men play games because they want to achieve something. They want an achievement or rewards. But the Bible talks how if a Christian lives for the Lord Jesus Christ, then he will set up treasures in heaven. Wouldn't you rather unlock achievements for eternity? As it says in Matthew six nineteen through 21, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So, where is your heart? On the game or on the Lord? 1 Corinthians nine twenty five says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all, in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. If you're trying to achieve things on this earth, you're doing it to obtain a corruptible crown. If you're trying to do things that's going to matter when you get to heaven, you're doing it for an incorruptible crown. Paul talks about a crown of righteousness in 2 Timothy 4.8. In James 1.12, it talks about a crown of life. In 1 Peter chapter 5, 2 through 4, it talks about a crown of glory. In Revelation 2, 10, it talks about a crown of life. And in Job 31, 35 through 36, there seems to even be a crown for being faithful to the Bible. 
In Job 31, 35 through 36, it says, Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that mine adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. So there's possibly even a crown for being faithful to the Bible, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and making the Bible your hobby. Matthew twenty five twenty three says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Did you know that if you do good in this life for the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're saved and you do good for him with the right motive, then you're going to inherit some cities in the millennial kingdom. And he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I'd hate to get to the judgment seat and hear that I'm not getting any rewards because I spent all my life playing Fortnite or whatever games people play these days. There used to be a game when I was growing up called Sims or something like that where it seems like you had your own city and you controlled it and put buildings in it and all that stuff. But if you get saved and live like the Bible says you, that you should, then you're going to have your own cities one day in the millennial kingdom. 2 Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. He'll deny your reign, not your salvation. But if you suffer with God here on earth, then you'll get some cities in the millennium. See, that's where these games came up with that. Everything's a copycat of the Bible. These games where you create your own cities and you're like the God over those cities. That's what it's going to be like in the millennium. The Lord's going to be sitting on the throne and he's going to give you rule over some certain cities if you did good for him on earth. So men like games because of the adventure. They like the achievements. They like to see that thing pop on the screen that says achievement unlocked. But the Bible has these things. And the next thing people like about video games is because they give a new you. Growing up, I would play NBA Live and NBA 2K and Madden. And they have the create a player option. And you could pretty much put yourself in the game and pretty much make a new you. And I doubt many people put their actual height and weight for their NBA 2K created player. I doubt they put their actual hairstyle or their actual muscle build. You pretty much made a new you most times. Many times on the game, a person can live out a fantasy world through the character on the screen. And many times people are so discontent with their life that they are living that they would rather forget about their real life and spend all their time online as their fantasy character, this new you. But the Bible can give you a new you. The moment you come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are, the new man comes to live within you. And 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, those that are saved, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. So you're a new creature at salvation. Colossians 3, 9 and 10, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge as for the image of him that created him. When you get saved, God gives you understanding, wisdom, knowledge, a better outlook on life, happiness, and contentness when you live for him and stay in the Bible. Of course, just getting saved won't force you into living right. You have to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit leading. But this will mold you into a new you. You're new on the outside, the, on the inside, the moment you get saved. But you still have to work on the outside daily. And myself, compared to me before I was saved, is like night and day. I'm a new me. That doesn't prove my salvation. And it doesn't make my salvation. It's just proof I've yielded myself to God in the Bible. And I'm, I'm not all I should be, but much better than I was. And 
Then there is an event in the future called the rapture. And at this time, you will get a new body. You won't just be permanently new on the inside like you are the moment you got saved, but you'll also be new on the outside. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So this him is the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will have supernatural bodies like the Lord Jesus Christ that can do way more than any character on a video game. This is a new you. This is better than any created player. A saying that gamers say when someone tells them to get a life is, I'm a gamer, so I have as many lives as I want. Because you see on the game, if you die, then you just hit the reset button. You just start everything all over. Something better with the Bible is that it shows you how to get eternal life. And in your glorified body that you will receive one day, you'll never die. If you fall up on the sword in battle, you'll not be wounded. You don't have to hit the reset button. But the Bible will show you how to make a new you. Much better than any create a player mode. But that's one reason why men play video games. They want a new them. They like achievements. They like adventure. And next, so many people play video games because it attracts all ages. And that's something you see about these games, especially in the day we are living in, is that it attracts all ages. My personal conviction is that a man needs to lay down the video game controllers and be a man. That's my own personal conviction. I'm not going to say every man who plays a video game is sinning or is, is wrong, but the games attract all ages. You have men that come home every day and play World of Warcraft or Fortnite or whatever the game is now that people are playing. You have kids that spend all their money on new skins for their video game character. But the same is true for the Bible. It attracts all ages. From an early age, you remember the great stories of Noah and David or Abraham and Jonah. And it's not something that is limited to a certain age group. Bible reading is the greatest hobby that a man can have. And you can start this hobby at a very early age from the time you learn how to read. And the Bible says in Psalms 119.9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So you see, the Bible cleanses you, while most video games just put dirt on you. Because there's a lot of wickedness and perversion and cussing and violence and stealing and killing in the video games. And it's just shame when you, when you see a, a gray-haired 50, 60, 70-year-old man who still acts and talks like a kid. His ambitions are like a kid. His goals are like a kid. His mind is like a teenager. The old man should have gained wisdom over the years. Proverbs 16.31 says, The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. When you get older, your gray hairs should be something that's a crown of glory. When I get older, I want to have stayed in the King James Bible and stayed with God. That way I can give wisdom to those who are younger than me. And I, per I personally really like to talk to older men who, and, and get wisdom from them and counsel from them. I like to listen to preachers who are way, way older than me, 50, 60 years old. Most preachers I listen to are well up in their 60s. But there is one problem. Most of the older men that I come in contact with in my everyday life are full of the devil. Men just aren't men anymore. They stayed a child in their mind. They don't have any wisdom. They don't have any counsel. Any counsel or wisdom that they give me is exactly opposite of what the Bible actually says. And it's like, you're so much older, but yet you don't have any wisdom. And that's because you didn't put down childish things. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Maybe it wasn't video games that they did. Maybe it was just they just continued to live for their self and never grew up. But I believe video games are a big part of why men don't grow up today, along with the music and all the self-love. 
But I believe time is a gift, and the devil knows that time is a gift. So he has all these devices, and he knows men are ignorant of his devices, and he will rob your time with things that are attractive to the flesh, and video games are just that. I don't want to waste my time on something so meaningless. But since video games attract all ages, this is affecting pretty much every family. Which brings me to the next point. Video games, while they're an adventure, they'll let you get some achievements. They'll give you a new you. And they attract all ages. They are addictive. Men will spend more time on a game than with their family. They'll get in debt with it. They'll neglect their kids for the game. The kids are spending more time on games than ever. And if you try to take it away, then they pitch a fit. 1 Corinthians 6.12 says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So Paul is big on letting something, he's big on not letting something have control over you or your thoughts. If you find yourself thinking about a game and playing a game more than you think about the things of God in the Bible, then you need to fix your priorities. Because Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Jesus Christ, the head of the body, should have the preeminent place in your life, not a game. So addict yourself to something good. If you're going to try and quit video games, then you're going to have to replace all that time that you spent with games. You're going to have to replace that time with time spent on something else and a good thing to spend your time on is the Word of God. Getting some type of ministry as well. 1 Corinthians 16, 15 says, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry. Addiction is not a bad thing if you're addicted to the right stuff. But video game addiction is a pretty big thing. But men play video games because they're addicted. And next, men play video games because of adversaries. And there's something in a man that just has to have something to defeat. He wants to defeat something. And if you have played any video games, then you know at the end of a level, you have what people refer to as a boss level. Where you have a really mean, ugly mostly incredibly large character that you have to defeat, you have to kill it. That's an ad your adversary on the game. But along the way, you have smaller foes that you have to get rid of. It's no different than in the Bible and the Christian life. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about singing whom he made of hour. The Christian life is a battle. It's a constant fight. You have the boss level, the devil, and you have to resist the devil. You have to use the word of God just like Jesus did, so he'll leave you for a little bit. But the Bible says in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you're going to beat the enemy, then you must know the word of God. And if you're spending all your time on a game then you're not going to know the Word of God. In Matthew chapter 4, when the Lord defeated the devil, he quoted Scripture, and he was always saying, It is written. It is written. And he would quote a verse at the devil and to defeat the devil. Uh, you couldn't say it's written because you don't know anything that God actually wrote because you're spending all your time on meaningless things in this life. And unlike the Lord Jesus Christ, when the devil attacks you, you will fail many times, just like on the boss levels on the games. Sometimes I would try over and over as a young kid to defeat that mean character at the end of the level. But thank God that he's merciful with us and forgives us when we fail. In Proverbs 24, 16, it says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. 
So just like you have to go through many foes and boss levels to win the game, you have to go through many adversaries in the Christian life to finish your course. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Even right now there are spirits, unclean spirits talking to you, telling you that what I'm saying is stupid. Those are your adversaries. And all throughout the scriptures you see an enemy. Moses went up against Pharaoh. David went up against Goliath and Saul. God's people have constantly fought the world, the flesh, and the devil. So you see all throughout the Bible you have these boss levels. You have these big, ugly, mean characters that the character has to defeat in the Bible. You really see that looking at the, the books of the kings there, where they fight, fight against these giants and these lion-like men and these lions in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. All these boss levels are adversaries. As individuals, we get victory over the devil through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you defeat the adversary. In Revelation 12, 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And throughout the scriptures, you will see the devil take numerous losses at the hand of God. You saw way back at the beginning, where he fell from heaven when he was Lucifer, the anointed cherub. He falls again during... Jesus' earthly ministry when he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He falls again in the tribulation time period when he fights Michael the archangel. And then he is then on the earth incarnate as the son of perdition. He then falls again right before the millennium. And an angel comes down and chains him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And when the story winds up, you will see that the one with the power to end the devil once and for all is the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see that the devil gets knocked down and beat up all throughout the scriptures. In Revelation 20 and verse 10 it says, And the devil that deceived them were cast into, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Along the way, though, we're fighting small battles. We already know we have won the game. In Jesus Christ we have unlocked every achievement. We are just trying to win the small battles. And like Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. The video game world really reflects the character of people in the last days. If you have ever played online and interacted with most of the gamers in this world, it, it shows that it's just a horrible atmosphere for you, especially for your kids. The, the character of the people on the games is... Is not something that you want your kids around. All the cussing, the sexual talk, the perversions. the It's, it's just a horrible world to let your kid get into on the online gaming. But this has just been a quick study on video games versus the Bible. Do you want to set up treasures for yourself in heaven? Or set up achievements for yourself on earth? Do you want to spend all your time on the game that's pretty much meaningless are getting a book that Almighty God Himself wrote to you and to me. So I'd make that decision today about are you going to get in the book or are you going to stay on a game? 